difference between the traditional hair straightening systems and the nanoplasty. Hairdresser, welcome to the pre-event for the journey OMG effect where it's gonna happen on the 15th to the 21st of April. Congratulations, you have access now to the incredible topic that we're gonna talk about and you're gonna be able to participate on this big event that is gonna happen next week and I can't wait for that. Um, the event is gonna happen from Monday and but this week we're gonna have lives Monday, Wednesday, Friday and Sunday, all of them 12 p.m. Full on in content. But for those that who doesn't know me, my name is MJ. I'm a nanoplasty specialist and I'm here today to, and, and actually in my profile in general, you learn about how to achieve the OMG effect, which is that mirror glass look on your first application of the nanoplasty. And today we're gonna finally talk about the difference between normal straightening systems and nanoplasty. And I guess the reason why I'm gonna talk about this subject again is, I still receive a lot of questions about that. No many people understand the difference between the technique and the product. What is technique, what is product? And also, what is the difference between those straightening systems? There are so many brands out there, so many names out there, and I'm here today to clarify in your mind what is nanoplastic compared to the other solutions. So that needs to be very clear in your mind today. But just a reminder, this is one of the lives that I'm going to do this and on this pre-event week because next week we're going to have the biggest event of all. So if you want to learn how to achieve the OMG effect on hair straightening on your first application, it will be the right place for you, okay? So I really want you to understand that. If you want to participate on this event, it will be different than the life that we have now. It will be a training. I will teach you what to do. I will give you step by step. If you want to learn how to, you know, use the nanoplasty solution and the right technique, I'm going to teach you next week. So it's very important for you to enroll to this event. Otherwise, it will be very, very hard for you to be like, whoa, okay, what, what, what should I do? Messaging us on Instagram saying, what, what's going to happen? Um, did I miss the event? We are here to remind you. We are here to remind you and tell you. My team will be ready to give you all the information. But the most thing that you need to be aware is if you want to participate on this training, you need to enroll. This is for people that are enrolled. And why, MJ, you do that only for people that are enrolled? Because I need you to make a decision. It's not only about coming in here. It's about making a decision. I really want to spend time and really want to spend my energy if you are interested to become a, a someone that have the knowledge about the nanoplasty, okay? But let's go to the subject because a lot of people will be watching this video after and it's very important for me to give the proper information. Samuel, can you please help me with the pages that I ask you to print? Give me uh, three minutes. Okay, so Samuel asked me for three minutes. And why I have this um, pages printed? I wanna explain to you guys that a lot of products contains similar ingredients, similar ingredients. But it doesn't mean that if something contains similar ingredients, that they are actually similar. Because so many things we have today has similar ingredients, but the worth and also the durability and the, the material, they're so different. But I wanna clarify each one of the treatments so you guys will be able to understand them deeply. Because um, every time we mention nanoplasty, and I'll tell you, now it's way better than before. Before, when I used to say nanoplasty, people used to make fun of me, saying, what's that? It looks like a nose surgery. It looks more like a surgery, a plastic surgery. Um, they never associated that with hair. And now that they're very aware of the technology, it's easier. But then we have the other side. A lot of new brands, they took advantage of the name and the trend and they started calling their solutions nanoplasty. Even when they are not nanoplasty. And I'm here not saying that all the brands out there that call themselves nanoplasty, they are not nanoplasty. It's not what I'm saying. 
I'm saying is you need to be able to identify what is nanoplasty to what is not nanoplasty, okay? So nanoplasty is by Floractive. Floractive designed this solution. And today I'm gonna give you an overview about what is different on the technique of nanoplasty that are not really common on the other brands. Samuel, three minutes has passed. Can I have the page? Yeah. Thank you so much. We're waiting for Sam to give me the page now. That's amazing. Thank you so much, Sam. All right. So a lot of us think sometimes, okay, so what is the really difference between chemical straining and nanoplastic? Oh, he was so kind. Thanks for doing that. So let's think about that chemical straightening was the first solution created and it was probably created around the 70s and this solution has a base that was very strong we know we all know the base it was it has ammonia on the base and also formaldehyde which is a cancerigenous a cancerigenous product it gives cancer especially on the air on the airways because you inhale that product and also your customer inhale the fumes with that product and it can be very very dangerous so it's banned in australia and all around the world but it was the first solution created okay so what's formaldehyde the main ingredient that make the hay straight no, formaldehyde was actually the, the material that was maintaining the hair straight for a long time. So they were very famous back in the days and they transformed the industry. I cannot deny that chemical straightening transformed the industry forever. You know, it gave the chance of girls exactly like me, curly girls, to have straight hair. And uh, I just responded to this question yesterday. Someone asked me, um, what about MJ? Um, why does girls need to remove their curls? You know, the curls looks beautiful. Why she's removing it? And I just say, coming from a curly girl myself, I just cannot recognize myself with curly hair. I like myself with straight hair. And also, I'm a mother. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a wife. I'm a church member. I've got so many things on. Hair is definitely not something that I spend the time in the morning. So I want to wake up and definitely not take care of my hair for the last, you know, for 15, 20 minutes. I want to do something quick so I can leave home, drop my kids at school, come to the company, spend the time working here and, and, and resolving so many issues during the day. And hair is not really the place where I spend so much time. So when I, when I look at back, even being something so dangerous and, and having so much, um, um, has it for, for, for the body, it was a great invention. You know, we all need to admit that. So then, um, what was keratin? Keratin was actually a solution that came along after a few years for, for the people that say, you know what? I don't want my hair to become straight forever. And I feel like that I didn't decide if I want to have my hair straight or not. So keratin came as a smooth solution, a smoothing solution that was only removing that layer of, of frizz from the hair, but not changing the hair structure. Obviously that when keratin came along, it had the same issue of the nanoplasty because people were associating keratin to stra um, chemical straining as well. So many brands of keratin, they were using the base of chemical straining. So people were having keratin thinking that they were having a smoothing solution where well, actually they were having a straightening solution, you know, like something that removes the curl um, completely. So then in a few years, we had some new technologies coming in. So we had the Botox, we had also um, a, a few different names. So what is nanoplasty and where nanoplasty sits on that? So you have the chemical straightening, which penetrates the fiber and break the sulfur connection, which is the bonds. You guys know that as the bonds. You break the bonds. So then what happens when you break the bonds? When you break the sulfur connections, the hair, um, the hair starts having a new form, which is straight. So the connections that creates the, co the, the curls or the bonds on the fiber, it gets broken. It's actually similar to um, a letter. So it's like two sticks with a lot of, um, um, like a few connections between them. So then if you have a chemical straining, you break those bonds. So pretty much you separate them. They're not going to be connected in, ever again. 
What happened to this hair when you do chemical straightening? When you do chemical straightening, you also coat the fiber. And you coat the fiber because that product coating the fiber, it needs to be there to give that impression that the hair is straight. But then what happened when the hair with the hair underneath? It happens with the hair underneath that the, the, the hair underneath gets weaker because first the, the bones are broken and second the hair are coated from the outside. So this coat on the outside it will be very similar to the keratin but you have the deeper ingredient that break the bones. So then that's one of the reasons why it's very dangerous for you to bleach your hair after having chemical straightening because the hair underneath is super weak and it will not sustain the bleach. Sam, can you come here and see if there is any comments, anyone saying anything mm -hmm. or um, any questions that would be good to have some kind of interaction. Uh, it's just the phone is in another position today, which I don't really like because then I lose the connection with you guys. Um, yeah. So then chemical straining will create, create that division and the bonds will be broken. Okay. So once the bond is broken, there is no way to return. Then we have keratin. What is keratin? Keratin is also a protein that can cover the fiber and not only the keratin, obviously, not only the, 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 the keratin itself, because keratin by itself we have on our hair strand. It's natural in our body. So the composition of, chem of keratin is the product penetrates the hair, not in a deeper level because it coats the fiber from the outside. So coating the fiber from the outside you have the hair that it's actually not receiving much nutrients from the outside. What happened to this hair in the long term? Every time you do keratin, you coat the fiber. And then throughout the time, that product, that coat that is on the outside will start releasing, releasing, releasing. Then when it's all gone, you come back and then you redo it. And then the hair starts getting coat again. And then you do this process a few times during the year. I wish I had a photo here to show you guys of someone that done keratin in the beginning of the year and they will do it again at the end of the year. The hair condition will be always worse. It will be rarely the situations, very rare that they will have a better hair when they come back to do the, the, the process again. And why this happens? Because when you coat the fiber, you prevent the hair receiving nutrients from the outside. So, where nanoplasty sits then? Is nanoplasty a chemical straightening? Is nanoplasty a keratin? Yes, Samuel, a question. Uh, Cecilia, she asked, uh, what should I do if my hair is bleached and I want to get the nanoplasty treatment? Okay, that's a great question, Cecilia. Thank you. I'm going to respond to you in a second. Let me just finish the thought with the nanoplasty. So, um, where nanoplasty sits on that? Nanoplasty is a product that sits in between the true solutions. It's not considered as a chemical straightening because we don't break the bonds. And it's not considered as a keratin because we don't coat the fiber. Okay? So, why it's so hard to understand that? Because nanoplasty is an upgraded version of what we have the best on straightening. Because the way that the product was developed was thinking about what can we do to solve the problem that we have in the market today, which is bleaching the hair with keratin or chemical straightening, or even swimming in the pool, or even using products always sulfate free, or always have to clarify shampoo, or always having the ends dry. So it was a solution. So it was a product especially developed, but not only that, nanoplasty comes with a technique that needs to be implemented right. And I know that it sounds catchy because I have a brand and I'm advertising this brand, but I'm not advertising this brand because I sell this brand. I'm advertising this brand because it's the only one I trust. It's the only one I used and the only one that really worked. It's not because I'm receiving this or that. If this brand wasn't good, for sure, you wouldn't be me coming out on my mouth, Floractive. You will see any other brand. Because as a curly girl that used the hair straight all the time, I'm, I'm a hunter. 
I'm always trying to find good brands and trying to find things that are best for my hair. And Floractive definitely is the brand that I put my trust, that I trust, that I know how they manufacture. We have our own manufacturer. We're not a private label. We're not a small brand. We are a brand present in many countries and we produce our own product. So what happened on Nanoplasty then? So we thought, okay, not me, because it's very catchy when I see a lot of hairdressers saying, I developed a product, I'm sorry, I'm not a chemistry, I don't have capacity of developing a product. I can tell you what I would like to have in the product. And then someone that studied five, 10 years in that field, they will create a product for me. So Floractive has the own chemistry team. We've got the own engineers that works on products. So when I say we, I'm talking about in the name of Nanoplasty by Floractive. I'm not saying that MJ, the trichologist that study hair, would be able to create and develop a chemical product. I would never be able to do that, okay? I'm able to give the outcome. I would love a product that gives me that. I would love a product that have this type of ingredients. I would love a product, blah, blah, blah. Understand? So it needs to be clear. You guys need to be clear on that. There is so many people out there saying, I created a product, come on. Which background do you have to create a product? Okay, going back to the point. So what nanoplasty is? Floractive thought, okay, we need a product that sits on the hair for longer, but we don't want something that breaks the bonds. So we want something that will sit on the hair for longer and it will not damage the hair. So we still have room to bleach, we still have room to use chlorine, we still have room to salt water, we still have room for color, we still have room for, um, for having a hair straight, but healthier. Have thick ends and hair that have fullness, not that shrink hair, that fine, you know, those shrinked ends. So Floractive worked a lot and a long time for this formula. And they developed a formula that was able to get as deep as the chemical straightening without breaking the bonds and also in a level that was deeper than where the level of the keratin. So that's why we have an outcome that it's better in many ways. And to be very honest, I like extremely honest with you guys. I don't know how long nanoplasty will be around. I don't know if someone will develop something better, but I'm just saying on the last 10 years, I haven't seen anything better. And either my customers, it's hard to see something that can beat nanoplasty by Floractive, especially because of the experience. We've been improving. Every time we see a room for improvement, we improve. On the technique, I study every day, long hours, to give you guys the best technique, the best way of applying, so much that my students can do any hair type. And when I say any hair type, I'm talking about bleached hair, damaged hair, Hairs with perm, hairs with keratin, hairs with chemical straightening, hairs with permanent afro, hairs with um, shiseido, Japanese straightening, colored, any, any form they learned because they learned the proper, proper application, okay? Um, and what I'm going to do on the next week, I'm going to give you a proper step by step for you to be able to achieve the OMG effect in hair straightening, no matter if you are doing for the first time, for the second time, for the third time or whatever, I will give you this guidance for you to be able to achieve that. Now responding Cecilia, Cecilia, can you do nanoplasty after bleaching your hair? Definitely you can. What I advise as professional is, if the hair condition is okay, it's not elastic, it's not over processed, it's not that um, really damaged, you can apply the nanoplasty straight away. But if the hair is damaged by any means, and normally for a traditional straightening, for chemical straightening or for keratin, if someone arrives with freshly bleached hair or damaged hair, you will need to tell them, go home, I'm sorry, I can't do on you. For nanoplasty, you have this option. You can do as long as you do a pre-treatment prior. So definitely you can. We've done nanoplasty on top of fresh bleached hair. We've done on top of hair that has perm, hair that has chemical straightening on, as long as we take the right approach. When you take the right approach, you can do anything. Nanoplasty makes you have freedom, okay? So 
if you are watching this video, just a question, if you are watching this video right now and you would like to enroll for the event that's going to happen next week, you can click on the bio. What is the bio, MJ? You know where it's written, Nanoplasty, official distributor, blah, blah, blah. You're going to click on the link of the bio and then you're going to enroll to this event. But if you are watching this live, not on live, if you are watching this live later, just type on the comments, OMG, and we're going to send you the link. Because I know how busy you are. I know they have kids. I know they have a salon to run. I know that you have a really busy life. You're going to forget. And I'm making sure that my team is going to remind you. So you're going to get into the WhatsApp group. And on the WhatsApp group, I'm going to give you all the instructions you need. Okay? So I really, really want to see you there. Please, guys, can you please inform me on the comments? Did you understand the difference between chemical straightening, keratin, and nanoplastic? Can you please put the thumbs up and tell me if you understood? I want to really see. Can you see, Sam, if they are responding and they understood with the thumbs up? Mm -hmm. So when they start um, putting the thumbs up, you let me know because I really want to make sure that they understood that, you know, um, the difference between them both. How much is it? Great, because if you guys understood, oh, amazing, amazing. Um, yesterday, I received a message of someone saying, hey, MJ, um, I'm not too sure what is nanoplasty. And this is a question, and this is a something that we're going to hear for a long time. I believe when keratin came along, it wasn't that easy to say, hey, I've got keratin on, you know. But now you could be asking me, okay, MJ, I understand. There is keratin, chemical straining, and nanoplasty. But there is so many nanoplasties in the market now. What should I do then? Okay, so I'm going to give you a very easy, simple example. Can you see this car? Which car is that? I want to see you, if you, are, if you guys are attentive. Is the image in the center of the mm -hmm. video? Okay, good. Okay, so which car is that? As soon as someone write it, the name, Samuel, you mm -hmm. let me know. <laughs> Because the phone is on the other side now. I can't see your comments. I want to know if any woman knows this car. I know, I, I'm know. i sure that if it was a man, he would be able to catch the name of the car like that. But if it was me, I would be like, yeah, I think it's greenish, yellowish, something. Yeah, if you don't know the name, I understand you. Yeah, yeah, sister. You know, um, high five. I'm the same. And the same. Nobody uh, said. Cecilia responded, is it Suzuki? Suzuki. <laughs> Cecilia, I would say Suzuki too. You know, I had this in mind. I was like, I think it's Suzuki. <laughs> it's, um, which one it is, Samuel? It's a Mitsubishi Mirage. It's a Mis Mitsubishi Mirage. So this is a Mitsubishi Mirage. And I want you guys to tell me, what is this? What is this here? It's the lights, right? The lights. And then what is this card made of, Samuel? Do you know the material? Is it aluminum? God knows. Plastic. <laughs> it's aluminium? No, it's metal and metal. plastic. Okay, metal. Let's see that it's metal. Okay, they've got the lights. They've got two doors, you know, glass here to protect. They've got the wheels. Okay, great, great. So, hold this thought, okay? What about, uh, now you guys will know, which car is that? <laughs> I'll tell you, I'm so bad with cars and my husband is like a pro with cars. He knows every car. I, if I show him a photo of the dashboard, he says straight away, oh, I know which car is that. I say, how come? They all look the same. So you know, you all know which car is that, right? They know? They are saying? Which one? No, okay, no. which car is that? Which car? Tell me. If you don't, I will tell you. This is a Ferrari. And I was in Italy last week and... That was where it was invented, right? In, in mm. Italy. The Italians, they so like precise and they're very chic. So obviously they invented the Ferrari and the Lamborghini and all the, the rich cars in the world. Um, this car, let's see what it has. It has the lights as well. It has the wheel. Eww. Look at that, it got the glass too. And what they made of metal as well, right, Sam? Carbon fiber, all different. Sometimes, okay. Let's <laughs> let's say that the cheap one, it's made of metal too. What is the difference between these two cars? Tell me, what is the difference? The difference is this one here cost fifteen, fifteen one five, fifteen thousand dollars, and this 
one here costs three hundred thousand dollars. Sorry, half dollars. a million. Half a million. Half a million. Five hundred thousand dollars. Why, MJ? They both have metal, lights, wheel, a glass, door, the material they are made of. The money they spend to create the product. The quality and the knowledge of the engineers that designed the product. And most of all, the quality of the ingredients they used to create these two cars. So what is the difference between nanoplasty by Fluoroactive to the nanoplasties out there? First of all, we were never called something else. We were never called keratin. We were never called chemical straightening. We were always called nanoplasty since the beginning. Since day one, Nanoplasty was always called nanoplasty and the technology was called nanoplasty. So there was no variation because of trend. And if, the, if there is a trend coming out, we're probably going to create a new product. We're not going to change this one here for the next trend. Understand? So nanoplasty by Fluoroactive is not a trend. We actually create the trend because every country we go and we start the word, it becomes popular. And that happened in many countries. I spoke to the girl in France. And she said to me, MJ, when I started Nanoplasty here, nobody knew this name. And I say, this is the same story everywhere. If you go to India, if you go to France, if you go to Italy, if you go to Mexico, all the countries where Nanoplasty are so strong, it started the same way. They start with a big name and then all the brands stop copying. They change their keratin for Nanoplasty. They change their chemical straightening for Nanoplasty. They change their Botox for Nanoplasty. First of all, what makes them different? The quality of ingredients we have are top of the line. And you know that by the results. You know that by the longevity of the results. We spend a lot in ingredient and in research and people to create this product. So we're not renting a small factory in the, in, in, in like in the really interior of Brazil to create and produce our product. We have our own manufacturing. So we create this product from scratch. So when you see a lot of people comparing, you need to see there is lipsticks from MAC and lipstick, lips, lipsticks from any other brand. One costs $50, the other one costs five. Why? They all lipsticks, yes, but they different quality. They different quality. Another thing, you need to be able to identify what is really nanoplasty is what is not nanoplasty. I know there are so many brands out there and I'm not saying that all of them are fake. I'm not saying that. I'm saying there is many brands out there and I must believe, I need to believe that they're good as well. Because if I don't believe they are good, what is going to happen with the hair of someone that doesn't use nanoplasty by Fluoroactive? You know what I mean? I wish, I hope that they're good because then we can spread better products around the country. But if the product needs to be washed prior the application of nanoplasty, by now, you understand, it defeats the purpose of being nano. If a product needs to be clarified shampoo to penetrate inside of the hair, it defeats the purpose of being nano, understand? Another point, if after the application, you can't wash the hair on the same day, it's definitely not a nano solution. Or if you need to use sulfate-free products after the application, it's not nanoplasty as well. Because why we use sulfate-free products for keratin? Because the product coats the fiber and the, and the sulfate removes that coat. So we need to use sulfate-free. If you are using nanoplasty, but you have to recommend sulfate-free, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's not nano solution. So I hope by now you understood the difference between chemical straightening keratin and nanoplasty and also the nanoplasties. To the original nanoplasty. <laughs> I hope you guys understood. Um, don't forget the event that we're going to have next week. But still, this week we're going to have lives Monday, Wednesday, Friday and Sunday. Where I'm going to show you students that started with us, the nanoplasty specialist course. The results they're having. Because it's very easy for me to be here. Huh, blah, blah, blah. My product is good. My product's good. I want to show you in real life. People that are using and making money. 
and are helping the family and actually providing very well for the family with the nanoplastic by Floractive. And also be able to explain to you what's going to happen next week. Next week, I'm going to give you an overview and also a step-by-step -step of how to apply the nanoplastic by Floractive and the right technique. So you will be able to do that in your salon, okay? So if you don't know how to sign up and enroll, you can go to my biography on the links and then click on the link to sign in for the waiting list. And also, if you're watching this video after finished, you can type on the comments OMG and we're going to send you the link. I hope you guys enjoyed and I can't wait to see you next week. Um, not next week, actually, Wednesday, 12 p.m. I see you guys. Bye.